Um, hello, folks. Um, my name is Sam Alexander. I also work for IBM. I'm a senior software engineer and consultant for a um, division of Software Group, an organization within Software Group called IBM Software Services for Collaboration. And what that means is we're part of the lab. So my peers are the portal development team, the portal tooling team. And um, uh, uh, we're part of the lab for uh, IBM Collaboration Services. So we work with the enterprise customers, usually on site, uh, helping them build solutions with our collaboration products like Portal or IBM Connections or IBM Domino. And I specialize in portal development, and um, I work out in the field. So I'm really excited to be here today to talk about how uh, we're using Jenkins to build some of these uh, large-scale portal applications for enterprise projects in the field. So here's some of the things I'll talk about in this lightning-fast uh, uh, presentation here. Uh, we'll see how much we can fit in. Um, I'll set the stage by talking a little bit about the common characteristics of uh, some of these enterprise portal projects that I'm involved with. Um, and then we'll look at some of the things that we build, some of the portal artifacts that we build. I was going to ask, how many people are portal developers? Any, any portal developers? Oh, well, OK. So, um, but this is not unlike um, other large applications that you would build, so that's OK. Um, and then so um, I'll also uh, look at how Jenkins helps us in the field. Uh, to build these things. We'll take a look at um, SEM integration and uh, some integration with the build tools, which is my favorite part. And finally, uh, some of the things that we're doing with deployment with Jenkins and where we plan to go um, in, in the future. So let me start off by talking just really quickly about um, some characteristics of some of these large-scale enterprise projects in the field here. They're usually big. They sometimes start out small. We, want, we end up on site, just a few of us, start working with their customer. Uh, for requirements and things like that. And then the projects get really, really big um, really quickly. Um, there's, and I put this in here, strict de delivery deadlines. There's a contractual <coughs> agreement between the client and IBM to, you know, to deliver something, right? So uh, the, the client very rarely um, slips, or allows slippage of their delivery deadlines. So there, uh, there's always a very short time frame to get things up and running, which is one thing Jenkins is very good at. So the project gets big, and there's huge. There's a huge number of of, uh, of um, people, of, of persons with different roles. There's obviously developers. Uh, we have front-end developers, portlet developers, uh, Java developers, and other types of developers. We have infrastructure specialists that come in that help set up portal and configure WebSphere and the different environments. We have uh, software testers. And these people, by the way, are coming from the client and IBM and some of the vendor partners. Um, and we have business analysts on both from the client. We have project managers on both sides. So uh, it's a big project with many different types of roles across uh, the client and IBM. And obviously, with any big project, there's a progression from uh, across many different environments, starting from a local development environment with portal running so that you can test, uh, moving on to integration environment, testing, staging, and production. Now. Um, in these environments, when you're building a, a huge enterprise portal, there's many artifacts that you're building, and that's what we'll kind of look at now. The, the artifacts that we're building are quite varied. Um, obviously, we're building portlet wars. And uh, so the portal is made up of a bunch of portlets, and a page aggregates a portlet. So we have a bunch of different portlets, and they're sometimes built with various tool sets, uh, maybe some traditional Eclipse-based tooling, where you write out your JSPs uh, and your portlet code and, and any Java code in a model view controller type of way. Uh, we also develop and build portlets using other non-traditional frameworks like Web Experience Factory, which is an IBM software product, which kind of lets you, in a model-based fashion, you assemble your, uh, your application by uh, assembling components that generate the code for you. Um, so you can uh, almost uh, click and drag and, and kind of develop pages and, and uh, the look and feel and that, things like that. And, and the code generation feature develops a portlet for you. So there's portlet wars. There's standalone applications that sometimes exist that are not running on portal, but instead are running on WebSphere. Uh, anytime you develop a portal, you usually have a theme, a portal theme. And this is usually, um, you know, there's a couple of people that specialize in this, that uh, where you define the look and feel of the site as well as the navigation across the entire site. So uh, the, portal is, the portal theme is made up of a deployable enterprise application that gets deployed, as well as portal theme artifacts like the HTML and the CSS and the JavaScript. So that's being built. 
We have traditional Java libraries. Oftentimes, there's two or three uh, Java libraries that are specific to the project that a lot of the portlets and other applications are using. So we need to build traditional Java libraries. And then I'll talk a little bit about this one a little bit later because it gets into the spirit of continuous delivery. But there is this, this, this concept of a portal application archive. And um, you can imagine it um, really briefly. Instead of um, you know, some build script that builds the portlet, builds all the portlets, builds all, everything, and then one by one installs the various artifacts, imagine wrapping that all up into a single file with a specified directory structure. And that's the portal application archive. And you can hand this thing off to Portal's config engine and deploy uh, your entire solution in, in one fell swoop. And then, um, I won't spend any time on this, but we're also building other types of artifacts with Maven and, and sorry, with Jenkins and Maven and a couple of other things. Uh, one, of, one, of, one of them is we're building these reusable code assets. We call them feature sets where you can develop this functionality as kind of a reusable asset and then apply it to your other projects. And we're building other things like IBM form components and other things. So we've talked about like, uh, what it's typically like uh, on an enterprise portal project and the roles that are involved and the types of things that you build, uh, how does Jenkins come in and help us? Well, there's a, uh, I picked three things here, the integration with SCM, uh, the integration with the build tools, which is, again, my favorite, um, and then um, how it's kind of helping us with deployment, what we're doing now and what we plan to do. So at a high level, Jenkins is, uh, I told you, there's a, usually a short time frame and everything has to get rolling really quick. There's not a lot of time to to spend wheels on pretty much anything. So it's, it's nice to be able to get a build pipeline, a build system up and running very quickly. So um, that's one thing that we like about Jenkins is that um, out of the box, it's easily, easy, easy to install and easy to configure the built-in functionality as well as the plugins. And um, there's quick and easy integration with uh, source control management and, and build tools. So with the source control management, there's not a lot to say here. Um, you know, on the last couple of projects, we've used SVN. And um, pretty much we can go into uh, Jenkins and point, sub, point, the, point Jenkins at a branch uh, in, in our uh, S SVN to, uh, to integrate with SCM. So that's always very helpful, and, and it's done quickly. Um, before I talk about the, the integration with uh, Jenkins integration with some of the build tools that we're using, I wanted to quickly step back for just a second and talk about um, you know, generally how we develop and build portal solutions. We're usually using some type of an agile development methodology. Uh, we're having uh, several iterations and, and daily builds, snapshot builds, and scheduled release builds. And we develop in a way that we can develop discrete parts of the portal application, meaning that um, we, we, we logically group the components into projects. If we're talking about portlets, if we're talking about a fictitious insurance company, then we might put all of our quoting portlets in one project, and we might put our customer information type of portlets in another project so we can build those, those two uh, parts separately, and, and the developer can grab just that part and deploy that and test it, and that kind of helps not bring down the whole portal when you break something. So, with Agile and with you know, building discrete parts of the application and such, um, we find that Maven fits in really well with this because um, you know, we, we can take advantage of quickly uh, c coming up with a build script because of the declarative nature of the build scripts. And Maven has the concept of modules. So that's important because Jenkins loves Maven. They, um, you know, Jenkins understands Maven POM files and project structures with very little configuration. So what we've been doing on these client, client projects, and it's kind of shown at the bottom part of the screen there, is that we have a portal parent project with a POM file and a Maven POM file. And the Maven POM file, among some other things like settings and variables, it defines the sub-modules to build. Um, and those modules can also have children. So we can very quickly configure a Jenkins build configuration and point it at the portal parent POM and have it start building the modules that, that are, are declared in, in the POM file. So this has been mentioned in other presentations too, but there's a lot of flexibility when we build uh, with Maven. Um, sometimes on client sites we build with parameters, and other times we sometimes take advantage of uh, like a Maven release plugin to, um, to um, help us out there and to do release builds, which takes care of a lot of things like um, automatically updating the version in each project's POM file and, and such. So, you know, that's a little bit how we're uh, developing, uh, integrating Maven, sorry, um, Jenkins and Maven and um, with, with, with build tools such as Maven. So kind of in the spirit of continuous deployment, um, here's a little bit 
of information about what we're doing there. Uh, so I mentioned that you, you know, we're building a bunch of portal artifacts, portlets and jar files and theme components and such. There's, uh, there's many steps to deploy an enterprise portal usually um, because of the many components. And some of those components, there might be many configurations. So it can be complex very quickly. So and here's where I, mention, I want to talk about that PAA archive file for just a second because I'll show you how we, we're going to hook that in with Jenkins and Maven. So I mentioned that that portal ar application archive file uh, it, it kind of simplifies deployment of, of those many components and configurations because it specifies a file format that's basically a zip file in a certain structure, and you add your artifacts to that zip file in a certain structure. So what we can do with that is uh, we have a dedicated Maven project to build the PAA file. After everything's built, uh, this, this dedicated Maven project is run, and it builds this PAA file, and we're taking advantage of Maven's uh, a Maven plugin called the Resources plugin, which goes out and copies the, built, the previously built artifacts into a build area, and then the assembly program, the assembly plugin, which arranges those artifacts in the PAA directory structure that you have to follow. And you know, on the, on the previous slide, I showed how um, we have that parent portal parent project that that defines the modules. This PAA dedicated PAA project is built last because it depends on the other things being built first. So at the end, what we get is um, um, a, a zip file, that's the PAA archive file, that right now we can hand off to a deployment team and they can go take this file and run a script on the, on the portal server in the, in the environment and uh, deploy the entire port, portal application in one fell swoop. Um, so Continuous deployment is obviously um, very helpful. So you know, uh, you know, we, we do we do these things gradually because there's a lot a lot of other things going on. So what we're planning to do, and I've gotten some very good information from some of the other sessions, is we're planning to um, uh, continue on and um, hook up Jenkins to run scripts that automatically deploy deploy this PAA file to an environment, and then. Um, obviously configure Jenkins to do some automated testing for us, such as running some Selenium tests. So that's where we're going in the future. That's how we're kind of using Jenkins in the field to build portal applications uh, for IBM Enterprise customers. And um, thanks to our sponsors. And um, I'll take any questions that you might have. <laughs>